Hi and welcome to part 11 of our uh, KaiKai tutorial. I just realized something before I go on and do show you the copper pour. I realized that this um, switch is actually on the same footprint as the battery holder. So that obviously isn't going to work. Now, <laughs> so we need to move that. And I think the switch should probably be on the front anyway. So all I'm going to do is flip that round. By the way, I made my battery holder a bit bigger. I looked at the dimensions again. So, in any case, that I'm just going to connect that up and then we'll get on with the copper pour. Right, now that that's all connected up, just do a DRC. Everything perfect, there's nothing connected. Now what I want to do is do a copper pour. In order to, so what a copper zone is, you can actually have multiple zones. And what this will effectively do is on the layer that you make the zone, it will connect all of the thing, all of the wires in a given net to copper on that layer of PCB, and it will fill all of the space with copper. So, for example, if we made a copper zone here and said that we wanted it connected to this net, then we would see this wire just go into a massive block of copper. This will be a bit clearer when we do it for the ground plane. So, let me do it for the ground plane. Now, what what you want to do is you select this tool, add filled zones, and then we need to select the layer on which this is done. And we're going to do it on the back layer, so the back copper. Now, because we've got this weird circular circular thing, I am just going to put a grid on that I can work with, and then click left click after I've selected that tool. It brings up this thing dialog copper zone properties. Now here we say we want the back layer, the back copper, and we're going to we want it connected to the ground net. We can actually choose any net that's in our um, in our in our connected thing. <laughs> like so, any set of wires which belong to a single net, we can choose, and it will connect up those wires to the copper fill. But we're going to choose the ground plane. Uh, there's a whole bunch of settings. Now, for example, thermal relief. So when a pad connects to the copper, what you don't want to happen is a direct connection of the pad to this massive copper ground plane because it would be very difficult to hand solder it. So with thermal relief, they put little connections to the pad, um, but which I'll show you in a second. Essentially, that's it though. We, we say copper zone, this is what I want the copper zone to be, and press OK. Then we draw the copper zone. double click to end and then just run DRC and DRC will fill the copper zone and because I've got this selected to show the copper zone over here we can see now what it's done and so then you can see that all of the ground connections are well you can't really see from there but what you can see is the non the things that are not ground connections are not connected to that copper they've got traces but then there's a little gap around them you can disable this on and off by just clicking like that. So now we have a copper fill. To really see the copper fill, you need to go either to the 3D view or export it. And so in the 3D view, what you can see is that um, where, the, where, where there's ground connections, like here, for example, that's directly connected to the copper. And so this is all now copper on the back layer. Whereas where where we've got tracks on the back that are not um, copper, then they're excluded via a kind of exclusion area. And that's essentially it. So there's another ground pin, and then it's connected via there and there to this big load of copper. So effectively the whole back now is copper. Of course there'll be a solder mask over it, but that's what it is. There we go. So that's how you do a copper pour, and you can create as many zones as you want. You could create a zone for the front as well. Um, I'm not going to bother, but you could do, and or well, just a zone for a particular area, and say and fill it in. But that'll do. That is it. Our PCB is now ready to export, 
in the next session we'll just um, clean up a few things like the thickness of the wires and then we'll export it as a Gerber file which would be ready for manufacture.